Good morning. It is Monday, August 14th, 2017, and it is almost 10 a.m. Um, it's been quite a while since I did a video, and usually when I've done videos, I was exercising and huffing and puffing. <laughs> But I just kind of wanted to do an update um, on what's been going on with me and my journey. Um, I apologize. I just can't seem to do videos on a consistent basis. Um, blogging also, just trying to get a lot of things done. So I haven't had the time to, to do it. So anyway, um, March of 2016... I weighed 311 pounds uh, when I moved to Nevada, and today is August 14th, 2017, and I am down about 90 pounds now. Um, you can see my neck is starting to do the shrinkle, and my body is getting smaller. Um, but I mean to tell you, this journey is been very enlightening and really causes some soul searching at least for me um, I'm only going to speak personally because that's all I can do is share my experience um, when I went into the bariatric process I was 298 pounds um, December of 2016 so I had my bariatric surgery on May 4th um, and I weighed 268, so I had lost 30 pounds prior to just trying to make sure that I knew how to do this and I wasn't just using the surgery um, to lose weight. Um, my goal has been to learn to eat healthy, and I can tell you I'm still not mastered that, even though I have weight loss, um, because I have still a dysfunctional relationship with food and after this last month and a half, I really realized how much I use food to punish myself. Um, when I feel self-loathing, when I feel like I have failed, um, I want to punish myself. And so I grab for the food that I know I'm not supposed to have. I know sabotage is my healthy eating. Um, it's not a diet. Um, yeah, there's restrictions and things that you're supposed to, you know, follow when you do bariatric surgery um, or try to choose to, you know, eat healthy. Um, and that's basically staying away from carbs and starches and, you know, that kind of thing, um, the sweets. But I had to do a lot this last month and a lot went on this last month. Um I went to California um, basically to wrap up the rest of my belongings that I own. Um, in 2015, I sold my three-bedroom, two-bath mobile home and pretty much 90% of my belongings, things I had collected for years. Um, you know, it may not have been great, wonderful belongings and stuff, but it was mine and... I chose to have an alive estate sale because of health issues. I couldn't maintain my mobile unless I had roommates. And I, as sick as I was at that time, I had no energy and strength to deal with roommates and what maybe their problems would be my problems. So I chose to sell everything and I chose to move to Nevada um, my daughter, my eldest daughter, allowed me a room in her home and basically had it there for the last almost two years, even though I had only, I may have spent six months, eight months at the most um, there. Um, and there's two toddlers in the home, so they needed that bedroom. And so my job was to go back to Fresno and to clear out... Um, what I didn't need and didn't want anymore. And that was emotional because the stuff that I kept was sentimental. Um, I had kept it for a reason. It had some kind of sentimental value along with my memorabilia and keepsakes and 
a lot of business financial records that needed to go through. So um, for a little over a month and a week, I went to spend time with family and my little grandbabies and great grandson and spend time with my California family. But my goal was to get this stuff done. We ended up having a fight um, over a pet um, issue and so it triggered off a lot of different emotions in my eldest daughter and I, um, her wounded child issues and my bad mommy issues, um, the years that I was not a good mom, um, all of that got triggered off and so we had to deal with that, um, which brought up more of that self-loathing feeling of I was a bad mom during my drinking years, which I was. Um, I had my own sexual abuse issues that I had to deal with and all those dysfunctions to get past. I'm trying to get this light out of my eyes, my glasses just makes it look really weird. I'm sorry. Um, probably if I turned off a light. Hold on. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. I had to close the blinds. Anyway, I had all this self-loathing, um, and then I had to go through paperwork that was um, back from days where I just have never learned financial management and misspent money and my mother's inheritance. And so going back and looking at all those records, you know, again, made me self-loathe and just shame and guilt shame and guilt shame and guilt and shame and guilt for me are the two biggest triggers and they make me cry just you know by trying to talk about them and so the more that I feel self-loathing where before years ago when I felt like a failure I felt like the biggest and I'm sorry I'm going to use the word fuck up that there was and that triggered off suicide attempts I had five suicide attempts under my belt and God wanted me here for a reason and so he didn't allow me to take my own life but that's what always got triggered off and now that self-loathing that failure feeling is a self-loathing feeling doesn't make me want to commit suicide doesn't make me want to go out and take an overdose or drink myself into oblivion but I will eat because that's the only vice I have left I have conquered so many addictions in my life sex, men, affairs cigarettes, drugs, alcohol food, coke so coca-cola, not coke the drug and now all I have left is food that's my only vice. So I have used, I am using that as a means to, again, punish myself, my body. And so today is the beginning, again, of getting back on track. And I started blogging again yesterday because I definitely noticed that when I write and I journal my feelings and emotions, that craving, that push, that get in there and eat something that's not good for you goes away because I get it out. I get it out of me. I'm no longer stuffing it with food and stuffing the emotions with ice cream or M&Ms or chocolate chip pancakes or whatever I can get my hands on. That's not good for me. So today isn't going to be a complete good day, but I am back on track today. I am back trying to do what's right for me and my body. And even though I've still been losing weight, I was averaging about a pound loss a day when I stay on track. When I don't, it's maybe I lose two ounces to eight ounces. Um, so in a month and a half or almost a month and a half, I only lost 10 pounds. Um, and that's disappointing to me because it isn't the poundage that matters to me. It's not it, the number on the scale as a reward for my hard work, but it's a sign that I'm showing myself love, my body love. I'm having self love, not self loathing. So this is a goal for me. This is going to be a journey for me because I definitely 
can see how I can sabotage myself so easily again and be back on that downward spiral. And even though I don't sit there and pop a handful of pills to try to kill myself, self-loathing actions, eating myself to death is a slow suicide. So this is my personal experience. Maybe it'll help somebody else when they're going through this journey. But I will not go through this journey without digging deep emotional because I am seeing over and over again. I saw in the beginning, I knew that this is how I was going to have to approach this. And if I didn't, I was going to end up sabbing my self, sabotaging myself and be 325 pounds. And I don't want that even though I'm still having joint pain and hip pain and more pain than I was at 311 pounds in my hip, I know that I can get up quicker. I bounce up. I can move easier. I can get around easier. I can get in and out of cars easier. I don't have the shortness of breath. My body is definitely changing and getting there. And I know I have a long way to go, but I just want everybody to know I'm doing okay struggling every day but I'm doing all right this pain no pain no gain right so I plan on doing healthy pain not the dysfunctional self-destructing choices I may get off track I may go down that route but I will get back on track and I will do this for me because I love me and I have shown myself more love in these last eight months, nine months than I have probably in my 59 years. So don't give up. Keep it up. Whatever it is that you're battling, know that if you start journaling, know that if you start looking inside, you will find why you're sabotaging yourself. Stop sabotaging yourself. Stop the self-loathing and start the self-loving. I love you guys. Thank you for following me and being there as a support. That means a lot to me and I appreciate it. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye.